Jimmy has made a documentary on the 86 Mets called Once Upon a Time in Queens. Why did you make a documentary on uh, the Mets? What's uh, What was the sell? Many people have wanted to make this documentary, but this is the first time that the Mets and baseball have cooperated because there are some unflattering depictions of not just the team, but the game. And there's pretty crazy stuff going on. I mean, these guys were almost all on amphetamines. They were <laughs> almost all doing cocaine uh, right. after the game, before the game. You know, they were there were arrests mid-season. There were multiple fights. There were fights with other teams. There were fights between players. It's, you know, crimes were committed. A team plane was destroyed. It, it, like crazy <laughs> stuff. So God. why did the Mets agree to this documentary if it's so unflattering? It's, it's Isn't that kind of mind-blowing? Because they're smart, because I think they felt, hey, listen, everybody knows this story now. Books have been written, um, stories have been told, and this is the truth. This is what happened, and it was a great team, and it is part of what's fun about baseball, good or bad. Gary is great in the documentary. You know, Gary remembers... Gary Delabate, Baba Booey, you About mean. that series that, yeah, Baba Booey, that I think probably most of the players don't even remember. Let's compliment Baba Fuhai. I'm very, yeah. very amazed by his memory. Yeah, like Gary remembered that the ball hit the Newsday sign. Dave Henderson hit a home run in the top of the 10th to make it 5-3, to three, and that's when you thought it was over. And I was sitting with my dad down the left field line. It made this, like, loud metal clang. It was the greatest night I've ever had with my dad. Mm. You know, it's interesting that, Gary, you had that for you was one of the best nights uh, of your life with your dad because many of the players we learned talking to them had very bad or very complicated relationships with their fathers. And Keith Hernandez's dad, Keith says the biggest mistake he ever made was getting his dad a satellite dish because yep. his dad would call him after every at bat. This is an adult man who's already been MVP of the National League getting yelled at by his father in the locker room after after at bats. Daryl Strawberry's dad would tell him he was worthless and he was garbage. And when Daryl was getting booed and, you know, everybody was, you know, mocking him and he had his, his drug problems, he said it didn't bother him because when your father calls you worthless your whole life, uh, a group of strangers shouting it at you doesn't make an impact. The bad, the guy who seemed to have had the best relationship with his dad was Dwight Gooden, and Dwight Gooden's mom shot his dad. But Jimmy, wow. tell Howard, who's the star of this show? Lenny Dykstra is Lenny Robbins' um, fiance, Boyfriend. Lenny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> is the star of the documentary. Why he was he like the, the kid on the team. He was like the yeah. young guy who came in and he was small and people were like, you, what are you, the bat boy? You know, it's like <laughs> one of those deals. And um, gave himself the nickname Nails. That was a self- Oh, you know, that was him. <laughs> I didn't know that. I always thought the team loved him so much they called him Nails. I had no idea he came up with that himself. That's just unbelievable. I don't know if the team loved him because he talks about like one night, um, he was just out of his mind. It was the night before a game. He's in the lobby of the hotel kicking Gary Carter's door. Just, he said, donkey kicking the door over and over again. Gary, come out, Gary, just drunk and crazy. And Gary wouldn't come out. Gary wouldn't come out. Finally, the door flies open and Gary grabs him by the neck and pin it lifts him up above his head and pins him against the wall. He's like, don't you ever fucking come into my room again. Don't you ever fucking do this again. And he never did it again. You know, these guys, they don't give a shit about anything. They're like, they're overgrown. They're, they're men, but they're kids. They're like, uh, yeah. they're playing a kid's game and they behave this way. But it's, I guess maybe that leads to their greatness. The fact that they don't give a shit. They don't worry about anything, you know? One of the most, I think, haunting stories of, in the documentary is, um, is about, um, Gooden, they're talking about when Lenny Bias died. You remember Len Bias? He was yeah. the number yeah. one. The University of Maryland? Yeah, and he was picked number one by the Boston Celtics, and two days later he overdosed on cocaine, and it was a real... Tragic. Like, kind of, it was a moment for them. They were like, oh, my God, that, you know, this could happen to us. About four hours after he has this, like, moment where he's like, oh, my God, this could happen to us, he calls his drug dealer and says, uh, get me the Lenny Bias stuff. Oh, my yeah. God. I didn't know all that, actually. I will watch this thing.